Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to use the Lotting Organizer app for your smartphone uh, to build and create auctions. Now, getting into this, we are going to create two separate auctions. I'm going to show you how to uh, get into those auctions, how to uh, share and delete these auctions, as well as uh, putting in descriptions and taking photos for these auctions. And I'll just give you an idea of how this app actually functions. Now, go ahead and grab a phone that has this app on it to make sure that you're walking through this with me so we can uh, give you some hands-on experience of how this app works. Cool, so once you have that phone in hand with the app on it, we're gonna go ahead and open up the lotting organizer. Now, if this is the first time this app is being opened on this phone, just an FYI, you will need to enable uh, camera and storage permissions. So if you get this prompt, just go ahead and click OK, allow and allow to make sure that we're giving permission to take pictures and save data onto the phone. Now, this is your main login screen. All we're going to do here is click login. And this will take us to the home page. This is going to be where you see your list of current auctions that you have available uh, in the app at that time. Uh, and this is specific to the phone itself. You won't see auctions from other phones on this. It's going to save it onto the phone and you won't be able to get it anywhere else. Cool. So on the top right hand corner of the screen, let's click these three buttons, these three uh, little dots. And this is going to open up the menu that you'll see throughout the application. We have three options, home, which is the current page. We have new auction, which obviously lets you create a new auction, as well as log out, which brings you to that very first logins uh, page. You probably won't use that too much. Also on this uh, uh, main screen here, we have two more new auction buttons. We have the big one right here, and we've got a little uh, button down here in the uh, little floater right down in the corner. So let's go ahead and create an auction real quick. I'm not going to explain the whole process this first time, uh, but we will get into more depth when we create the second auction. So click New Auction. For the auction title, just type in Demo. For Starting Lot, just put in 1000 and click OK. So we've created an auction, and now just go ahead and click on the bottom right-hand corner. Go ahead and click Next Lot. This is just going to create one lot so we don't have an empty auction. And go back to the top right-hand corner of the screen. Click Home. And now we're back on this main screen, and we can see the auction that we just created. Now, we can see the title that we entered has the date of when we created automatically added. So whatever title you entered, you don't have to enter the date, it's automatically going to add that information for you so you know when you created this auction. And generally, the title is going to be uh, more personal to the auction. You want to put your name of whoever's creating the auction as well as uh, a good description of what the auction is. Uh, also, you can also see some information here of when this uh, particular folder was last modified. So you've got your start date and uh, last modified date. This will just kind of help you give you some information as to uh, how long it's been since you've messed with this auction, let you uh, delete things that you, know, you may, no may no longer need. Uh, and then also, obviously, you can see how many lots have been created for this auction. So we have three different functions with these buttons. We can swipe left, right, or we can actually click on this. So let's start with swiping right or left, however you want to look at it. We've got a delete button. When you click on this, pretty straightforward, it's going to delete this particular auction. Uh, now it's going to ask you twice just to make sure you don't accidentally delete an auction you're still working on. And let's just leave it alone for now, so press cancel. Uh, this is just so that you can delete the auction from the app without having to log into the back end of your phone if you forget to remove it once you've uh, uploaded this off of the phone. Uh, you also have, if you swipe right, we have the share option. 
this is going to zip the uh, the entire contents of this auction, photos, uh, spreadsheet, everything included, and put it onto uh, Google Drive or Dropbox, whichever you prefer. Now, keep in mind, auctions that are of a larger size are going to take some time. Now, when you click this button, this uh, this whole field is going to snap back. That's how you know that you've clicked the button properly because it doesn't give you any sort of uh, a spinner or anything telling you that it's working. So click this. It'll take a second. Uh, larger auctions will take a little bit more time. So just be patient until you see this pop up. Uh, and once it does, you have your options of where to save it. Cool. So now that we have that, we can also just click straight on the auction. So go ahead and click on the auction. And we can see we have the auction title and the, uh, the lot, this first lot that we created that we don't have anything in. So cool. Now we know what all those buttons do. Let's go back and create a little bit more in-depth auction and we'll show you actually how to build lots. So click on the top right hand corner. Let's go back home. And then go ahead and click new auction from this home screen. As if you were creating a brand new auction right after starting up the app. Cool, so now we have our main screen. We're gonna create a new auction, and let's do it uh, a little bit more specific. So enter your name, and let's enter a description of what this auction's gonna be. And then, a uh, little FYI for you on creating starting lots, make sure you're entering a number between 1,000 and 9,999. Uh, the app will not let you enter any characters. It'll give you, a, give you an issue. Uh, it's also not going to let you enter anything less than 1,000. So if you try and do that, it's not going to let you. So just make sure we're entering something between 1,000, 9,999. This makes sure that everything is synchronized with uh, how things operate on the, uh, the website, uh, as well as making things a little more clear cut for this uh, application itself. So let's just start at lot 1,000. Go ahead and click OK. And we are into our very first lot. Now we have a couple different fields here. We obviously have the auction name here at the top. We've got our lot number. We've got our consigner number. We've got our description. And then we've got some buttons down here for photos to add new photos to this lot. And we've got go back, view lots, and next lot. So let's start at the top. Obviously we know what lot number is. When you click next lot, this lot number will automatically increment to 1001 uh, just to save you some headache and make sure we're going sequentially through this auction. Consigner number will always start at 1 for new auctions. Now, you can change this, obviously. Just go ahead and click on that and put in whatever the consigner number is for this particular auction. And the good thing about this is when you click on next lot, it's going to save this consigner number. It's going to keep this consigner number going until you change it. So you don't have to change it multiple times. Just find out what the consigner number is for this particular auction. Uh, if there's multiple consigners, you'll have to change it a few times. But it saves it as you're going. So it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, now the next field we have here is enter lot description. You have two different options of how to enter this. You can enter it manually, old-fashioned, with the keyboard, or you can click this big button or this little button on the keyboard. Both of these will allow you to uh, uh, speak, and it'll do speech-to-text into the lot description. So if you click on this, now this isn't going to work on this one because this is just an emulator, but if you click on this and press the... Uh, microphone button, it should record what you're saying and put it into the slot description to make things a little bit easier for you. If it's not too noisy, it should work pretty well. So let's go ahead and enter our first lot. We're just going to do a lot of computers. And now we can take our photos. We have up to eight photos that we can do with this particular app right now. If we click on the button, it's going to open up our camera and allow us to take a photo. 
Now, something to be aware of with this is when you open up this camera, you need to be patient with it. Some phones will take longer to load the camera than others. And when you take the picture, some phones will take some time to actually capture that picture before it gives you the check mark. And sometimes you'll see the check mark before it's actually finished saving the photo. Uh, now, if you go too quickly, it's not going to save that photo and you'll, you'll be able to see that it doesn't uh, show you a preview in this screen. Now, again, because this is an emulator, it's not going to show the preview for me of the photo that I just took, but you also have other options with this. So if you hold down on this picture button of the photo you just took, you have three options, cancel, delete, or view. Now, if we press view, we can see a little bit larger view of the image that we just took, just in case you want to make sure that it wasn't blurry or anything. You also have the option of deleting the photo, which will obviously remove the photo. Uh, furthermore, you can also just click on this again and take a different picture and make sure to give it some time to think about the picture and it will overwrite the photo that you just took. So you don't have to delete it if you need to retake the photo. That just gives you the option of removing that picture if you uh, just don't need it at all. Cool. So uh, we will leave it with one picture and go ahead and go to our next lot. It saved the consigner number again. We'll go ahead and enter a new lot. Lot of laptops. Go ahead and take our photo again. All right, cool. So now we have this second lot, and let's say that we have multiple lots of laptops. We wanna do uh, more than one, and we don't wanna enter this twice. We can use the same picture, we can use the same description, cool. So let's go ahead and instead of clicking on next lot, let's go ahead and hold down on it. Now this gives us the ability to create identical lots. Now the way this one works is it's gonna create as many as you say you want to create. So if I say I wanna create five lots, it's gonna create five lots including the one that we're on here. So the one that we're on here plus four more lots. And then click okay. Now let's go ahead and go to view lots to make sure that this did what it was supposed to do. When you click view lots, it's gonna ask you if you wanna cancel, discard, or save. Now since this was already created, since we did the duplicate lots, it's already saved, but it can't hurt to save. And we can see here we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Cool. So let's create uh, one, more new, uh, one more new lot. When you create this, it's going to go sequentially to the last number of the auction. So we've got 1,005, so when you create a new lot, it's going to automatically start at 1,006 for you. And let's enter a new description. A lot of, let's say, boxes. And let's change our consigner number to 20. Take a quick picture. Cool, so now we've got that, and let's create uh, five more identical lots of boxes. And now we are on lot 1010, and you can see the consigner number stays the same. So let's click next lot one more time, just to get to a new fresh one. And we, again, have these buttons go back and view lots. Now, when you click both of these buttons, it's going to give you this same option of cancel, discard, or save. Now, since we're on a brand new lot that we haven't done anything to, this would be an instance where we want to, you know, discard. Because if we save, it's just going to save an empty lot. Furthermore, if you typed in something here and you didn't really want that and you just want to go back to see what the previous item is, again, if you click save, it's going to save what you've done here. If you click discard, we're going to remove that information. Cool. So we go ahead and view lots. Now, since this one was already created, once again, discarding will not remove or delete a lot. It just discards changes. So, if I was to make this lot of boxes with 
strings and we click view lots. If I click discard, it's simply going to remove the change that I made while uh, since I got to this particular lot. Cool. And now we have our lovely list of lots. And same as the main page, this has the swipeable option to delete. So if you swipe on this, you can click delete. It double checks with you. Not twice like the first one, but it does double check with you to make sure that we want to delete this and it removes that from the list as well as deleting those photos entirely off the phone. Cool, and then go ahead and go back to the top right hand corner. Go back home, we can see we've got our demo, we've got our estate auction with the list of lots, and let's go ahead and swipe right again and click share. And we can share this to where we need it to be. Cool, so now you should know how to use the lotting organizer. If we have any questions or if you have any suggestions on how to improve or if you do encounter any bugs, just let us know and uh, we'll try and make this better as we move along.